Um, I am Sebastian, I'm the founder of uh, Algorithmic, and this is Wes, our uh, community manager and uh, technical artist. Um, I'd like to do a quick introduction to uh, the talk today, um, just about Substance Painter. We'll be uh, focusing on Substance Painter, which is our latest tool. Uh, just a few words about the company itself and Substance overall, Substance Designer especially. It's uh, used by uh, 30,000 licensees, uh, paying customers, uh, 15,000 of which are actually very active, like using it on a daily basis. So it's growing, it's growing quickly, uh, it's been growing especially very quickly in the past uh, two years. Um, and, and very good people like uh, Blizzard, Naughty Dog, Rockstar, Ubisoft, and you name them, uh, big, big, big studios. Uh, use Substance Designer as the hub and as an uh, uh, important piece of their uh, texturing pipeline today. Um, the main advantages and three main ones uh, of using Substance for Unity and for any game development uh, platform out there, I would say. And the number one is speed up uh, texture creation. It's mostly, uh, to, today it's mostly used uh, to help producing textures faster, and uh, which means when when you mean faster, it means also uh, better quality because you have, you have more time to iterate, uh, simple as that. Also, uh, reduce the package size. Uh, one of the biggest advantages uh, of uh, Substance, uh, the Substance format, is that it can be parametric. So if you work well, like in, a little bit like in Flash, if you make sure that you don't embed any uh, huge bitmaps, uh, what you end up with is a very small package that you can distribute very quickly. So it, let's say if you have a game that has uh, thousands of textures, uh, instead of uh, downloading something that uh, weighs um, gigabytes sometimes, you download something that's way smaller in megabytes, and then you generate these textures, these bitmap textures on the device. So at install time, load time, or run, even runtime sometimes. So that helps distributing games uh, faster. Um, and then the third one, maybe the, the smallest one uh, today as, at least, is uh, modifying textures at runtime, meaning that because some of these textures are param parametric, if you program programmatically change the parameters of a given texture, you, you call upon our engine, and which is today integrated by default in Unity Player, uh, and that means that the engine will regenerate all the bitmaps for you, all the textures for you, and it, it will change uh, according to these new parameters. Let's say, for instance, you're entering a room, uh, some, something happened in that room, like an explosion, maybe you want the textures to look different next time you go there because they will be dirty or uh, there's more sand, there are more whatever, uh, uh, traces, traces of explosion, I guess. So these are the type of uh, things we can do and a uh, uh, few of our um, clients actually use Substance this way. Um, so this is for Substance Designer, mostly Substance Engine. Substance Engine, so you know, is integrated by default in Substance in Unity, so you don't have to pay for it. That means that you can use uh, the Substance file format directly in Unity, load it, it will generate a bunch of textures for you. And then you can call upon that engine again to, uh, to say, well, when you want these textures to be generated or baked. If, you, if in the end you want to just use uh, bitmap textures, it's fine. But today, uh, we'd like to talk about Substance Painter, which is our uh, latest tool. So it's still in beta. Uh, what you will see is still in beta. We launched the beta in uh, early March this year, and it's been a, it's been a blast. Uh, a lot of people came to us and said, well, this is, uh, well, we've been waiting for this uh, for a long time. Uh, hopefully you will see why uh, during the demo. Um, we're very proud of it. It's still early in the development, so it's still missing a lot of uh, features, and we know where it's, uh, where it's going. Uh, and we definitely know where we want it to go. Uh, but uh, yeah, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Wes, who is uh, going to do a demo of the tool. All right. I think we have it up and running here. You do? Yeah. OK, there you go. OK, hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Wes, and uh, I'm just going to kind of run through Substance Painter. And so uh, what I'm actually going to show uh, no, it's about. It's not showing up there. Oh, it's not. OK. Uh, give us just a second. Do you have to switch something? Hmm. Yeah. Windows P? P. Oh, Windows P. Okay. But it should be in Windows. Okay. Extend. Extend. All right, all right. Okay. Works. All right. Thank you. Magical. OK, so um, what I'm going to show here is Substance Painter. And uh, I'm just going to walk through a demo here. And so we have this ship asset. And so right now, I'm just going to kind of show you how I would just kind of would work through this kind of material section here. And kind of the goal around this is that, you know, there's been a lot of talk with this Unite about Unity 5 and, and uh, physically based shading. 
And so Substance Designer and Substance Painter are both uh, built from the ground up to work uh, to author physically based content. And so what I'm going to show in this demo is how we could work on a piece uh, such as this uh, ship asset here. And we're going to do this uh, in a physically based method. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to turn off our post effects so that we can just kind of see more of just kind of the raw lighting and what we're working with. And like I said, we're going to kind of just work through this asset. And so first thing I'm going to do is just come over to my texture set here. And you can see that this is what I'm going to be working on. So we can break that down through texture set. And uh, I'm going to first go through and just kind of disable uh, these layers here that I'm working with. So make sure we're on the mid side. And there we go. So we kind of have this kind of raw kind of material here that we're going to start working with. Now, one of the core powers of Substance Painter is that we're actually working and painting across full materials. So I'm going to go ahead and just create like a, full, uh, a fill layer here. And uh, actually, I'll start building it this way. So we have this fill layer that I've just added. And so already, the, the physically based uh, shading is taking place for me. So I have this fill layer, and one of the things I want to think about is this object as an actual real-world entity. So what I want to do is kind of build this up as an actual material. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and think, well, this is a metal ship. I need to put some raw metal. I'm just going to click one of our paint material presets. And then here you can see that I was able to just quickly fill this entire layer here with an actual like cobalt material. Now, actually, these are presets. So I want to actually go with titanium. So if you take a look over here at our materials, you can see that the channels that I'm working with in this case, diffuse, rough, and metal. Here I have actually my uh, specular reflectant value for that particular titanium metal, and I have a roughness. So you can see that as I start to increase my roughness here, uh, the, the Fresnel effect, the, the light is being uh, dispersed. And you can see here that we now get uh, very, very dim looking, or uh, more appropriately, the highlights spread more through the roughness of the texture. And if we go all the way to pure smooth, you can see that we create uh, what looks like an actual mirror. So in this case, I'm just going to pull my roughness up to you know, about this area here. And also, you can see that I'm indicating this is full metal. Put a little bit more exposure. It's a bit dark. Oh, it's a little dark? OK. Yeah. Let me do this. Hold on, guys, just a second. If you were sitting, you have to come down. Yeah, I think this guy's in the way, way here. This one wants to be up, so you click on it first. This here? Click on, yeah, then go back. Oh, there we radio. go. All right. So here in my viewport, it's being lit with uh, image-based lighting. So I'm just going to come over to my exposure, and I can actually pull this up just a little bit so it looks, uh, yeah. see that a little bit better on the screen. You can see that that environment's actually lighting my scene, so we can actually adjust our exposure. So where we were headed with this is uh, we have this kind of uh, material here. This is going to be like our raw metal underneath. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pull down again my roughness. I don't want it to be perfectly shiny, but you know, you know, a little bit of roughness involved with that. So now we have this kind of raw metal underneath of this. If I go ahead and hit C on the keyboard, I can actually start to move through the channels that are making up this material. So if we take a look at our layer stack, I want you to think of this layer stack here, which is comprised of all these layers. We're actually layering uh, these effects to create this material. So think of this layer stack as a material. And so here you can see that I have my roughness. Here's my metallic information. And here's actually my base color here. And so now I'll just hit M to go back to my full material. So what I'm going to do is I've got this raw metal, and I want to be able to add basically like a, a paint on top of this. So we're going to have painted metal on top. So to do this, I'm just going to add another fill layer. Uh, in this case, I'm going to run over here again to my paint materials and just click a preset. In this case, I'm going to uh, click plastic glossy. Uh, the reason why is that uh, the reflectance value for plastic uh, is actually in the range of what we want to use for this uh, actual paint material. You'll find with uh, physically based content that plastic uh, being about 4% reflective is going to be probably the range that you use most of the time. So here we have basically this uh, layer here. This is going to be our paint. Let's go ahead and change our paint color. So here we're not working with any type of metal, so we can change our paint color. I'm just going to pull my slider down. I, I kind of like using this kind of like orangish yellow here, so we'll use this. Now, we also have the same abilities, again, to increase or decrease our roughness. In this case, I'm actually going to make this guy pretty uh, shiny looking. And so what we want to do now is we want to actually start to paint some roughness information. Well, here at this point, I could create a new layer. I could come over here to my brushes, and I could grab one of our dirt brushes here. So what I want to indicate here is that I have this brush. And let's just kind of come down again here to our materials. And we have this brush, but this brush is actually going to be painting across all of these channels. So here I can be painting diffuse information, height information, rough and metal, all at the same time. Uh, in this case, though, I want to only paint with one channel. So I could keep this here at rough, and I could increase this rough value. And I could start to paint. 
And you can see here that I'm actually painting some rough information. So that's one way that we could do that. We could actually paint with this with brush. However, another really core feature of Substance Painter is the ability to utilize physic brushes. So brushes that we can actually paint with a particle simulation. And that can help us when we're taking uh, you know, a, a vehicle asset like this and we want to add some weathering to it. So I'm actually going to, instead of hand painting this, I'm going to actually use my particles to do this. So if I come over to my particle brushes, we have lots of presets that we can work with. And we can actually save these presets and modify them. And I've done that. I've got one here that I want to use that I call rain. So I'm just going to go ahead and have this guy selected. So now I'm going to be using a physics simulation. I'm going to come over here and just make sure that I'm only working with roughness. And I have my roughness pulled up fairly high. And so at this point here, I'm just going to kind of zoom back. And I'm just going to go ahead and just click. And now you can see that I'm actually starting to rain particles here into my viewport. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and hit the C key. And I'm going to move over here to my roughness channel. And you can see that the particles is actually working towards the actual roughness channel that I'm painting on. So now I'll go ahead and hit the M key to go back to my actual full material. And so instead of hand painting that, I went through and I augmented this with some rough information by using an actual, well, let's just rain on the guy and actually create that roughness information. So I've done that. That looks good. But I still want to have, you know, I, I typically will tend to use these particles as kind of like getting me started kind of effect. So I still want to go ahead and go back to my brush, uh, tweak my little roughness setting here a little bit more. And I'm just going to adjust my brush size. And then I might come in and just start to manually start to kind of rough up some different areas as well. So here again, I'm just using a hybrid combination of using a particle simulation with then also being able to go in and just manually paint this as well. So um, especially in this area here, I want to make sure that these, these exhausts here are kind of roughed up a little bit more. So here I'm painting in a 3D viewport. Uh, works really well. But if I wanted to, I could also split this view and go into a 3D, 2D view. Now, what we do in Substance Painter, we love materials, we love lighting, we love things to look really good. So why not light the 2D view? So here is our 2D view. If I start to rotate and move my light, you can see that we're going to go ahead and fully light our 2D view. If we're going to paint, we might as well make sure it looks right. So we're going to come in here, and I can paint here in my 2D viewport, and I can just actually start to paint right here in my 2D view as well. So another very important aspect, and I'm just going to kind of demonstrate this really quick. So let me just create a new layer here. And I'm going to grab a default brush. I'm going to add some diffuse information. And I'm going to pick something like this really bright red. We're going to delete this here in a second. But what I want to show is that Substance Painter is, works. It paints seamlessly across UV shells. So here you can see that this part here is my UV shell. I can actually start to paint. As I start to paint this, notice that the paint is automatically retaining and moving towards its corresponding UV shell for me. So it makes uh, seam removal uh, an actual snap. So it's not a problem at all. So let's go ahead and just delete that layer. Just kind of wanted to show that feature. Uh, let's just jump back over to our full 3D view. And so now we kind of have this rough information here. And uh, let's see, we put that here. So again, I can toggle this on and off. So I had talked about, you know, think about this, this layer stack here is, you know, we're building a material. What's also really interesting is the layers themselves are containers for the channels. So I have this layer selected. And if I click this drop down, you can see that, well, all of the channels that are associated with my document are available to me. So again, diffuse, height, rough, and metal. I'm going to go ahead and put this into rough mode. With this layer selected, I can then grab my opacity. And then I can start to you know, dial or kind of fade this roughness in and out just by using the slider. So the layers themselves can actually be targeted to affect a very specific channel. So that's something that's pretty powerful as well. Uh, so now that we kind of have this effect in place, I think I want to start to uh, add some kind of uh, damages and things like that. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go back to this layer here. that we're, This is uh, like our painted layer on top of our raw metal. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click this button here, and I'm going to add a substance effect. So as uh, Sebastian was talking about, that, that core substance technology, uh, that is basically the root uh, technology that's used in all of our programs, Substance Designer, Substance Painter. And that same procedural-based uh, dynamic ability to use a substance file is available to us here in Substance Painter. So here I've created what we call a substance effect layer. Or, uh, you can see that I can actually toggle this. It's part of this actual uh, component here. I'm going to click my uh, button here to check out the effects I have. I have several. In this case, I'm actually going to grab hold of this. So if I just hover over this, we can see that this is a rust weathering effect. So I'll go ahead and just click this here. 
And now that we have this in place, all I need to do is just come over to my Rust spreading, and I'll just dial this up. And now we have some Rust spreading on our mesh. Now, this is actually being driven by some information about our mesh. So here you can see that Substance Painter knew that I had an ambient occlusion map and a curvature map that was baked using Substance Designer. When I, when I created this project, I imported those maps in as well. So when you set up a project, it asks if you have any model data that you want to associate with this. So I brought that in. Substance Painter knows about that, automatically hooks this up for me. So in terms of it being very productive, very fast way of working, I don't have to worry about maps and stuff. All I have to do is just go through and have fun just tweaking these settings here and getting you know, the type of effects I might want. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull, uh, you know, just get maybe something kind of basic looking like this. Um, I would like it if these, this edge effect kind of had some more height to it. So again, think of that paint kind of peeling. So what I'm going to do is just increase my height intensity here just a little bit. And then I'm actually going to go to this layer. So right now, notice that I'm actually on that substance effect. I'm just going to go up and select the layer itself. Now, uh, this, again, I kind of want to hammer home this process that we're constantly working across these multiple channels. Notice I don't have any height information. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and enable it now, and notice that all of a sudden I have height information. So that channel wasn't available to me at first. It doesn't matter. I'm very non-destructive the way I work. It's very, you know, it's not this linear process that you'd be familiar with with something like Photoshop. It's something that's, you know, very alive, lets me work very free. So just simply enable that channel, and now I have that height information. I'm going to go back to that weathering effect, and I'm just going to kind of just increase this just a little bit. You know, it's, the good thing is that we can just increase this as much as you like. So now we kind of have this process going here. Uh, I think I'll just hold down the shift key and rotate, just kind of view my lighting to see how things are going. Uh, so I think let's go ahead and just uh, continue forward. Let's add some more effects here. So um, I'm going to go back to my substance effect here. And this time, I am actually going to add, let's see, which one did I use before? I think, uh, let's see, I think it was uh, Grease, this guy it's right up there. here. It's, uh, no, it's the yellow part. It must be material effects. Up there, up there. Oh. Up there. Yeah, it's one of these. Oh, OK. It's like okay. one, yeah, just one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this guy on here. And so what this guy was going to do for me, I'm just going to increase my levels here just a little bit. Actually, actually, it was MG Dirt. I'm sorry about that. I couldn't remember which one I used. Let me just go back and grab that guy again. I'll go to my substance effects. I think it was. Let me just find it here. Selective Dirt. This kind of gives us a good way to kind of just run through these guys and see what we have here. So we have lots of different options. We That's can the first one on the left. Up there. Yeah. There we go. MG Dirt. That's what I'm looking for. So right off the bat, it starts to add this effect here. So what I want to do is, uh, again, notice that it's based off my curvature and ambient occlusion. So again, that mesh data. I'm going to take my luminance value and just move this down quite a bit. And so what I'm actually trying to create here, and uh, it really shows up over here, is we've got this painted metal, or yeah, this kind of painted layer on top of our metal. And if you ever notice that a lot of times with this painted metal, uh, you know, you'll start to see little bumps and, and, and things like that across that painted metal. So this little substance effect allowed me to just quickly add that. So I'm going to just go ahead and just decrease my dirt level, just add this up just a little bit, increase this down, and then just added just a little bit of a secondary effect here for this. So keep this down, pull the levels up, and there we go. So like right here in this area, you can see, and hopefully you can see that there on the screen, yeah, yeah. we've got these nice little bumps and these uh, little areas right here, those little imperfections that you typically would see when you have like a metal surface and then you paint uh, right on top of that. So it was really easy to add that effect. So, so far, we're just, we're moving right along. And uh, so, you know, this is great. We have our painted metal, we have our rust, but, you know, we have that raw metal underneath. So now what I would like to do is go in and like chip away that raw metal and actually, or excuse me, that painted metal and show that raw metal underneath of it. So to do that, we're going to think about this again like a real world object. We've got paint on top. We want to chip it away. So what I'm going to do is go back to this layer, my painted layer, and uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just mask this. So I'll go in and I'll add a black mask. So right off the bat, you can see that you know, it's making everything transparent we've been working on, and we see that raw metal underneath. So right here under this raw metal, we can see that we actually have some of this uh, a lot of this rough information that we use from the particle effect. So with this mass selected, I can also add a substance effect to that as well. So let's add a substance effect. 
And let's just scroll down and let's add this one here. I'll just highlight it so you can see it, the metal edge wear damage. So we'll do this here, and it starts to add this effect to me. Now, um, obviously, this doesn't look right, so let's just invert this guy. So I'll hit Invert, and we'll come over here and add a little bit of a grunge to this. And then just like that, you can see that we were able to add some edge damage across all the edges of our model. So let's do this here. Let's, um, let's increase our grunge mount quite a bit, just so you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So here you can see, uh, kind of right here, we were able to just easily create some edge wear right on top of this guy. So this, you know, I don't want to do it too much, so I'm just going to back it down just a little bit here. So now we get this kind of effect. Now what's nice about this is that this is working on the mask. You can see that we have our substance effect as part of this mask. If I go ahead and click over on the actual paint area, and so if I ho hover over these guys, you can see the actual maps that are being produced for me behind the scenes. And then you can see that now we have access to these effects. So this one layer is housing all of our material. It's housing our two effects we've been working with. It allows me to work with a mask, and that mask is being affected uh, by an actual substance as well. So at this point, what we'd like to do here is uh, continue to work. Uh, let's probably start to add some leaks to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new layer. And in this case, I want to go ahead and I want to go back and add some more of our particle types effects. So I'm going to come over to our particle brushes, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to select leaks. And with leaks selected, I uh, definitely don't want this hot pink, <laughs> so uh, let's change that. Let's just uh, bring this down to like kind of a darker value. Uh, just in terms of thinking in terms of physically based, we want to make sure that I don't make this value too dark. Um, but we can always change it after the fact. So we have our leaks here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, in this case, I'm going to have my metal make sure that uh, it's set all the way to zero. And I'm going to give myself a pretty high rough value here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of scroll down and take a look at some of the actual particles that we can work with, some of the particle settings. So with these particles, I had mentioned earlier, you can make your own presets and things like that. So we have a lot of control over the actual particle simulation itself. So in this case, um, I think what I want to do is uh, I might just increase the gravity factor just a little bit. And uh, let's just kind of see what type of effect we're getting here. And if I wanted to, once I get a, an effect that I really like, I just simply right click and say save tool or save brush, and it will save that to my library for me so that I can reuse it at any time. So let's just kind of come over in this area, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit the button here and just start to paint just some leaks across here. So I'm just going to kind of randomly just pick a few areas. Again, what I'm doing here is I'm just thinking about using the particle effects to kind of just get me, uh, you know, kind of in the ballpark of where I want to go with this. Just a really quick way. I'm just here. I'm just going to let them just kind of pull around. Maybe I don't like how it's hitting the underbelly too much. I'll just undo that. And just, and again, here we'll just come over in this area. Let these guys streak down here. And you can see I can also just move my brush as I stroke. So anyways, I've got a couple of leaks here. Um, I'm sorry, it's really addictive. I've got to do some more. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should stop now. Go ahead. Okay. All right, so now that we have this in place, uh, another thing that I would often do with this type of effect is we'll bring this down. So I've had this effect. I'm actually going to right click on this guy, and I'm going to add a white mask. So the white is basically mean that's opaque. So we're keeping this guy opaque. I still have my leaks brush selected, and I'm actually going to, let's see, go through my tool here. I'm going to move up. Let me just uh, give myself a little bit more room here. I'm going to come over here to my grayscale, and I'm actually going to make this black. So now I'm going to be painting some transparency. So I can also use the particle brushes to create masks. So here what I do is after I kind of get this down into place, I'll just you know, do a couple little tweaks here where I might just you know, do a little small button click just to kind of break this effect up a little bit like this you know, if you wanted to. So you kind of get the idea of how that works. So uh, where we actually have that effect taking place here, let's see, where's my layer? So here in this case, I'm going to go back out of that mask. I'm selected my layer. I'm on my diffuse here, so I'm just going to come over to my opacity and just maybe drop this down just a little bit or something like that so we can get that case. Uh, again, something else I think I might want to do is uh, just go ahead and create a new layer. I think I'll come over here and add a burn effect. So I'll select my burn particles. Last one. And then questions. Yeah. 
Uh, well, here we go. We'll just go ahead and just start to create this. So this burn effect here, and I'm just going to pull this across, and you can see that you know, here I'm just kind of, you know, for this exhaust area, I'm just going to kind of create some burn type effects. I think in that case what I wanted to do though is I wanted to add a little bit of wind to that. So here I'm going to come over to where I have some uh, global wind. And here you've got your X, Y, and Z. I'm just going to just dial in a little bit of more X here so that kind of blows the particles off into an angle a little bit more to kind of go with this, uh, this actual effect. So there we go. And then with that, drop a little bit of the opacity to that as well. Okay, guys, so I'll just kind of stop the demo there and just kind of open it up to some questions that you have. And uh, again, just we wanted to just iterate that, you know, with this, we're working with, you know, physically based simulations designed around creating PBR content. If we want to export these maps, I could just simply right click and say export all channels. It takes a look at all the materials I have associated with whatever mesh I imported. I can export these channels, and then you just bring those maps directly into Unity, hook them up into the standard shader. So again, I'd like to open it up for questions. Yeah. Is this on beta or can you buy it right now? Repeat the question. All right. So the question was, is this on beta or can we get it right now? Uh, yes, you can absolutely get it right now. Uh, it is in beta. Uh, it's going to be the final release is coming about mid to end September. Uh, so yes, it's available on Steam, also on our website that you could buy at a discounted price. Yes. Okay, so the question was, uh, if you make a model in 3ds Max, how do you get that into Painter? Very simple. Uh, you have your uh, object in Max. Go ahead and just, uh, like you would, just assign your materials. Uh, then you export FBX, and then here you come up to File, and uh, you would say New. And when you create a new, it, I'll show you the dialog here, so I'll just say Discard for this, and select the mesh. And then here's the dialog where you import any baked information that you want to work with. Any baked information being like a normal map coming from a tangent space normal map, like High poly, low poly, difference. Yeah. Works with FBX, OBJ. Yes? So where are you generating the preset brushes, like the particle brushes? Where are you actually doing all you know, If you wanted to create a custom, is that in here, or is that actually Yes, well, there's, it, it would be in here. That's kind of a two-fold answer. Uh, so first off, you have the brushes as a preset. So we have the presets. We can come over and, and work with the presets that we have to you know, create a different effect altogether. Some of these effects, such as you see this organic spread, you know, and you, know, you can get some wide effects. Now, we're also going to be offering an editor uh, at a later date where you could actually create your own particles that would then import. Now, that's going to be a separate standalone app, but then you would import that so that you could create you know, from scratch your own particle system. But if you want to create your, uh, the substance effects, the substance effect, you need substance designer indeed. The particle effects, you need you, you can start from these ones and tweak them or edit by hand like the, the scripts, so it's very simple scripts, or use the editor of uh, the third party developer. If you want to create a substance, substance effect, effect, you need a substance designer. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. So if you make like, a really great particle effect in here, can you export your effect out as like a video or something like that? Say you make like, a really cool Repeat the question. Like, Okay, so the question was, if you create uh, you know, a particle effect in Substance Painter, can you export that out? And uh, no, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> not for now. Sorry, not for now. But Yeah, we've been asked that. Yes. Yeah, Sorry, question. you had a question. Uh, so when you showed the Substance Designer the other day, you showed me sort of a high bone quality workflow where you just have all the to create a bone mass. Yes. Can you do the same thing in Painter, or do you need both programs? All right, so the question was, uh, with Substance Designer, you can bake the high and low poly. Can you do that in Substance Painter? Uh, no, you can't. You would need Substance Designer to do that. Um, yes, question? Okay, so the question was, uh, it's good, looks like it's good for you know, one to one 3D work. Uh, can it be used to create tiling as well? And the answer to that is yes. Um, just a, a, a quick explanation of that. If I were to come into my 2D view, I showed earlier in the demo that you can paint across your UV shells and it tiles, or basically it moves from one uh, you know, UV shell or where those uh, edges are continuous. So the discontinuous edges meet up. So if you were to just bring in a plane, say you had a plane that you wanted to actually create uh, some tileable type uh, imagery with that, uh, you had your plane, if your plane edges, they meet around the uh, zero to one space as you start to paint. So basically if I move my brush and I paint across this side, the brush stroke will continue on the other side. 
So you can use that to create you know, little tile maps and things like that. I guess yes. last, last question, I guess. Uh, so the question is, is 8K texture support on the roadmap? Yes, yes it is. 4K will be like uh, end of next month, 4K support. It's already in there. I mean, you can export in 4K. Uh, we have internal bits that do that. But we want it to be able to work at 4K as well. So uh, it's a different story. 8K is, uh, again, a different story. Uh, you need a big GPU, beefed up GPU. We, all, we do everything in GPU, so it's a matter of VRAM and uh, strong enough GPU. But it will come, yeah, eventually. So I guess, I guess I'm sorry, maybe uh, you can jump. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we don't want to take too much of time. I, I want to just go back very quickly because I'm the CEO here, so I need to make money somehow. So here's, <laughs> so that's the, the latest um, uh, slide I wanted to show you. Uh, during uh, Unite, uh, we uh, introduced a, a, a discount. So if you're interested, uh, come. You, you can use it, tweet it, uh, take a photo of it, and um, uh, yeah, benefit from it. So the Indie pack and the Pro pack, so basically there are two licenses, Indie and Pro. Uh, indie means like if you're a studio that does less than $10,000 per uh, year, you're considered Indie. Above uh, that, you're considered Pro. So, uh, and the pack means Substance Designer plus Substance Painter plus Bitnot Material plus uh, some content. So it's a, it's a good deal. All right, thank, thank you, you guys. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>